Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Pastoral Update, Third Time's the Charm. But uh, thank you so much for being here. It's February 1st, 2022. Delighted to have you with us. Thank you so much. Let me just start as usual to give you the update on the week. We've got our Wednesday activities tomorrow. We're going to have our Wednesday morning breakfast, and we'll continue in our study of Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 14. Encourage you to be a part of that. And tomorrow night, our Christmas, I mean, our Wednesday evening fellowship dinner. We'll continue in our study of the women of the Bible. And last week we looked at Sarah, and then we'll have another lady to work at this week, maybe Rachel. And so we'll think through kind of how God's at work through some of these extraordinary women in the Bible. And so we encourage you for that, to be a part of that. So covered dish meal, bring a well-filled basket of food, and uh, come and help be a part of the life and ministry of our church. Let me also uh, just kind of take a moment to draw your attention to Luke chapter 11 because we've been talking about prayer and emphasizing prayer over the month of January. And so we always take January, make it a prayer emphasis month, and we've been doing that over the month of January, been thinking about prayer. And we spent most of our time in Matthew chapter 6 with Jesus' teaching on prayer. And I want to turn our attention this morning as we kind of wrap up our pastoral our pastoral emphasis uh, prayer emphasis month uh, on prayer uh, to Luke chapter 11, where Jesus says these words to his disciples. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now when I think about that passage, I love how Jesus says, Ask, seek, and find. But I want us to understand that He's not simply talking about asking for the big things in our lives, seeking the big things in our lives. He's not just thinking about knocking on the door when it comes to some major concern in our lives. In fact, what he is doing is he is actually saying, in everything, ask God. In everything, seek the Lord. In everything, knock and the door will be open to you. And so the idea here that Jesus is getting off to his disciples and to us is that we come before God with anything and everything, and we're confident when we come before him that he is going to answer our prayers according to his perfect will with the good things that we need. He's going to make provision. Now, if you were with us this past Sunday, we talked about how Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. And you know that when we looked at that passage, we talked about how the addition of all the things that we need and all the provisions we need in this life are guaranteed by the good character of God, by the goodness and the grace of God. When we think about prayer then, we recognize that God is going to answer our prayers according to His perfect will, and it's going to be good for us because we know our good and gracious God gives us all good things that work together for the good of those who are called according to His purposes, who love Him. And so we're confident that God's going to answer our prayers when we pray for the things that we need, when we pray for wisdom, when we pray for grace, when we pray for uh, patience and perseverance, when we pray for the provisions that we need to live in this life. And so Jesus gives us confidence and says, hey, listen, you come before me with all things. Number one, I want to hear all things from you. But two, you have confidence I'm going to answer them because I'm a good God, because that's the point of the illustration. What father who is an evil sinner, right? All of us are sinners. What father, when his son asks for a fish, does it give him, you know, will give him something other than a fish, a serpent? Nobody's going to do that. We're not going to give our children something that harms them. Or what father, when his son asks for an egg, is going to give him a scorpion? Instead of giving him what he needs to sustain him and support him, he's going to give him the one thing that's going to harm him and bring detriment to his life. And so what we find here in this passage is that Jesus is saying the confidence you have comes from the character of God. Therefore, you ask and it will be given. You seek and you will find. You knock and the door will be opened, confidently knowing that the Father who is in heaven, who loved us enough to send His Son for us, to restore to us a relationship with Him through Jesus Christ, is going to give us the one thing that we need, the things that we need when we ask Him for them. And so the challenge for us is to find a regular time to pray, to find a regular place, to shut out the distractions of the world, 
but also to pray with confidence and boldness that God indeed will answer our prayers according to His goodness. So let me just challenge you with that. Take everything to God. He wants to hear everything. And He also wants to give you boldness and He wants to give you the things that you need to survive in this life and to bring glory to His name. Because the testimony that you give to Him in response to the gifts He gives to you through faith is indeed glorifying to His name. So you guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll catch up with you later this week, uh, tomorrow in person, Sunday in person, and certainly next week on the Pastoral Update. Thanks so much for joining